Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Deanna Durbin, Pat O'Brien, and Robert Page in His Butler's Sister. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Once upon a time, there was an inexpensive little picture called Three Smart Girls, which startled most wise guys by doing more business than some of the super colossal productions. The reason was a gay and pretty girl of some 14 summers who had a thrilling soprano voice. She was no stranger to the radio audience because she'd been on the air every week. But overnight, the name Deanna Durbin became a byword for another Hollywood miracle. Now, eight years and 13 pictures later, Deanna's star is still in the ascendant. And as proof, we point to his butler's sister, the newest of those gay and diverting stories in which she starred for Universal Studios. We bring it to you tonight, direct from the current screen. And with Deanna, we have a very old friend of ours, Pat O'Brien, who gave a fine performance in the picture, and Robert Page, a promising new Universal star, who will be Deanna's leading man in her next picture. This week, they've been having quite a celebration in Deanna's hometown of Winnipeg. She's sponsoring a model home, which will be sold to provide milk for needy children in England. His butler's sister has the charm we always expect in a Durban picture. A bit of romance, a dash of comedy, a little adventure mixed with a master's touch and Deanna's song. I know of no better way to forget your troubles for an evening than by surrendering to this young lady's magic. The play has no axe to grind, no message to sell, but a very popular one of good entertainment. Call it escapist if you like, but you'll do a better job tomorrow because Lux Flake has made this diversion possible for you tonight. One of the harder jobs every housewife will have tomorrow, and for a good many tomorrows to come, is to make irreplaceable things last longer. Many lovely things are off the market for the duration, and, of course, everything must wear out sometime. But sometime is farther away if Lux Flakes is there today. And it's curtain time now for his butler's sister, starring Deanna Durbin as Anne... Pat O'Brien as Martin, and Robert Page as Charles, with Elsa Jansen as Severina. When Charles Girard boarded the Metropolitan Limited in Chicago, he had blissful visions of a quiet, peaceful trip to New York, all alone. But the price of being Broadway's most successful young composer involves more than a high income tax. It means autograph hunters, fluttery matrons, and an endless stream of hopeful actors and singers. Charles Girard wrestles with them at the stage door in his office at his home, and right now in drawing room C, aboard the Metropolitan Limited. Well, how'd you like it, Mr. Girard, huh? Of course, in the train you can't tell much about the dance routines, but... Very good, girls, very good indeed. But look, I just write songs. The man who does the hiring is the producer. His name's Mort Cowell. When you get to New York, see Mr. Cobb. Oh, go on. He wouldn't see us. Then try catching him on a train sometime. Sorry, girls. Goodbye. Oh, Porter. Uh, yes, sir. Let's tackle him again after lunch. He's got something on his stomach. Uh, you want something, Mr. Gerard? Yes, Porter. Privacy. I'm sorry, Mr. Gerard, but those young ladies told me they was friends of yours. Well, if any more friends of mine show up, tell them I'm... Uh, tell them I'll I'm... tell them you in eight. In what? Drawing room eight. It's empty. Okay. Tell them anything, but keep them away from me. Yes, sir. How soon do we get to Cleveland? Oh, in about 15 minutes, sir. All right, thanks. Thank you, sir. Well, you're a lucky man, Mr. Brophy. We just happen to have this one drawing room left. Drawing room A. Right here, sir. Sorry this mix-up occurred, conductor. Happens all the time. Glad we could help you, Mr. Brophy. Thanks. Oh, Porter? Yes, ma'am? I heard Charles Gerard is on this train. Charles Gerard, the composer. Is that his car? Oh, uh, Charles Gerard? Yes. Uh, you one of those friends of his, ma'am? Well, not exactly. But then, where? I guess I am. Well, you might try the next car, drawing room eight. Thank you. 
Now, mind you, all I'm saying is you might try. Thanks. Come in. How do you do? My name's Ann Carter. I heard you were on the train and... Do you mind if I sing for you? You mean right now in here? Oh, I know it's terribly awkward, but won't you please? Well, just go right ahead and go on, sing. Embrace me, my sweet embrace, for you. Embrace me. Your name is Gurley. Ann Carter. I'm from Central Indiana. I'm going to New York now. This is my first trip. Oh, visiting? Uh huh. With my brother, Martin Murphy. He's my half brother, really. Much older than I am. I haven't seen him in years and years. He lives on Park Avenue. Very rich. Hmm. The name is familiar, but I just can't seem to place him. You see, I'm known by thousands of people, and thousands of people know me. Well, of course they do. That's why I wanted to sing for you. Oh, is that so? Yes. I've always wanted to go on the stage. I've had some experience, too, in the center of a little theater. I never told Martin about it, though. I heard from him so seldom. I thought I'd just walk in and surprise him. Well, he'll be surprised, all right. Uh, wait a minute. What? If you're going on the stage, I've got something for you right here in my sample case. It's the best on the market if I do say so myself, and I bet I've got just your size. A wig? Yep, way like I am. Well, what's the matter? Come on, girlie, take it. Lots more where this came oh. from. Oh, uh, who... who... Yeah. Name's Frank Brophy, girlie, head salesman for the Williams Wigs Works. Uh, here's my card. Oh, oh I, I, I'm terribly sorry. I, I thought you were Charles Gerard, and I... Gerard? Charles Gerard. Name's familiar, but I'm I just... I'm afraid I've made an awful mistake. Excuse me. Hmm. Well, I'll be done. Could you tell me a... Good evening. Martin. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you again. I beg your pardon. Why, Martin, I don't believe you recognize me. Oh, you don't mean you... I do mean your little sister Anne. Oh, come on. Well, I'll be my kid sister. How do you like that? Oh, Martin, it's going to be such fun living here with you. Here, give me those bags. Oh, uh, now, sis, you don't mean you intend to stay here. Why, well, yes. Don't you want me to? Well, no, I didn't mean that, but, uh, well, I didn't expect you. Well, I decided to come the minute I got your letter with the money in it. You see, I'm going on the stage. You what? I've been studying for years and years. Wait a minute. I'll sing for no, you. No, 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 not now, no. Too late. Look, uh, kid, you, you can't stay here. Why not? You mean you're married? No, no, not me. Then why can't I stay here? There's lots of room. Uh, look, Ann, this isn't my place. What? I just work here. I'm the butler. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, kid, but, well, now you can understand. Of course. But that money you sent me, a thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know how I got that dough? I parlayed a $25 bet at Belmont. Like the horse in the first race named Little Sister. That's how I happened to think of you, and that's how you must have figured me to be a millionaire. It was Little Sister that started it all. A horse. I see. And there's another Little Sister, not a horse. Who has a big brother, and the big brother can't stay away from the track, and now his bus is broke. Martin, I'm terribly sad. Well, that's okay, kid. Forget it. Tell you what, you can stay here tonight. Thank you. The boss is out of town. He'll be back the day after tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk it over tomorrow. 
Huh? All right. Oh, it's a tough break, kid. Two pianos, Martin. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, that's the boss's racket. He's a musician? Haven't you ever heard of Charles Gerard? Martin, Martin, not really. You you don't really work for Charles Gerard. Yeah, I do, so what? Well, I can't believe it. He was on my train, but he got off at Cleveland. I almost sang for him, too, but he turned out to be the wig man. The wig And was... here I am, right in his own home. Oh, Martin, everything's going to be just fine now. Wait a minute. What's going to be fine? Don't you see? This time I'll think for the real Mr. Gerard. Oh, no, no, you won't. It's part of my job to keep safe struck kids like you away from Mr. Gerard. But isn't it part of his job to hear people sing? Now, look. Look, I got swell food here. Good quarters, good clothes, not too much work. No worries. And a boss who likes my brand of liquor and cigars. This is the best job I ever had, and I'm going to keep it even if you are my sister. Now, come on, kid. I'll show you your room. All right. Is there anyone else here? Only Severina, the cook. She's asleep. Martin, dear. I could get a job. Don't in... dear me. I'm only a brother. Here, I'll take the grips. I was going to say that I can get a job and pay you back. The hardest work I've done in years. Are they heavy on size? What I was going to say, Martin. What I have you got to... loaded in these scrap iron? Here's your room. Thank you. Martin, I've been trying to tell you that I can probably get a job and pay you back your thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And you sure. can be my manager. That means you get ten percent. Yeah, yeah, sure, ten percent. You can stay here tonight. The more you go home. I won't go home. Says you. I won't. Martin, I don't think you care a bit about me. Of course I care. But don't you see the spot you got me in? Now pipe down. We didn't go to bed. I'll see you in the morning. Darn right you will. But not after the morning. morning. Maybe yes and maybe no. Good night. Oh, brother, good night. <laughs> Come in. You think I get your breakfast? You are mistaken. No, I didn't ask you to get my breakfast. You're Severina, aren't you? Yes. Where's Martin? Out. When will he be back? For my part, never. He's a loafer, that Martin. Severina, that's no way to talk about my brother. Your, your brother? Your brother? Oh. oh, so that's it. You heard us last night and thought... Oh, wait till I tell Martin. Oh, forgive me, please. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, tell me, you like fish? I love it. Then sit down. Whoever likes fish is a friend of mine. Thank you. There is one trouble with Mr. Girard. He won't eat fish. I cook the fish. He won't eat it. But in the end, we'll see. Severina. Huh? Well, I... Come on. Get it out. I was just wondering, do you think Mr. Gerard would mind if I sang for him? You sing? Yes. Oh, bad. Oh, no, no, I sing very well. At least I've been told I do. Answer is no. If you are a singer, you had better scram out of here before you are thrown out. <laughs> Mr. Gerard sounds like an ogre. Ogre. What ogre is, I don't know. But Mr. Gerard is okay. I think he has glamour. <laughs> Severina, as long as I'm here, couldn't I help you? I can wash dishes, dust the house, vacuum. You are a good girl. How you come by that Martin for a brother, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, after breakfast, and, and then maybe... Yes, yes, you, you can help me with vacuum cleaning. But first, uh, finish your breakfast. Good morning. Well, look, don't mind me. I just thought I'd say good morning. Am I turning this thing off? Oh. Good morning. I'm Mr. Gerard. Oh, you are? Yes, I... Oh. oh I'm sorry. Yes. What's your name, please? I'm Miss Carter, Mr. Gerard. You mind if I call you by your first name? It's customary, I think. I... I'd love you to. My name's Anne. Very kind of you. Ask Severina to bring me some coffee, please. Yes, Mr. Gerard. And you can vacuum this room some other time when I'm out. By the way, when did you start? Start? You are the new maid, aren't you? Oh, oh, uh, oh yes, yes, sir. Well, I'll tell Severina just coffee, no fish. Yes, sir, I will. Never mind, I'll tell her myself. Severina! Mr. Gerard. Severina, good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gerard. We didn't expect you until tomorrow. Well, you know what an unaccountable fellow I am. Yeah, I see you got a new maid. A new what? Excuse me, sir. Severina wasn't there when Martin hired me. She was out. Out? Yes. Mr. Gerard wants some coffee right away, Severina, and he doesn't want any fish. And he said for me to finish the living room some other time when he was out. And ask Martin to come in when he gets back. Yes, sir, we will. 
What goes on? He thought I was the new maid, and I accepted. Oh, don't give me away, Severine. Everything's worked out wonderfully. I am completely deep and dumbfounded. What? Shut that out, will you? What do you think you're trying to do? If you drive in this room, if you heard you singing, he's... Martin, you're horrible. I know it. Now get out of here and start packing. You're taking the first train back to Indiana. I can't. I haven't any money. Well, don't worry about that. I'll take a look at the racing form. I'll race some money. You start packing. Pull yourself down. We need a mate and N needs a job. Shut up. One more minute, we'd all been out here on our ears. Are you a goner or shall I go to the boss myself? You wouldn't, say. Oh, I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Good. We go to the boss together. You squeal on your sister and I'll squeal on you. What are you talking about? I'm talking about how much silver you don't do, how much work you don't do, how many bottles he got to smoke. And maybe when I get excited, I, I think of more. Well, what are we waiting for? You want to be a maid, huh? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm so glad All right, you're right, so wait, you're going to get it. Silver to follow. Floors to wear, furniture to dust, windows to wash, and a few other things. But they all come later. First you do the marketing. Here's the list. Where's the market? Twenty-two stories down, twelve blocks through north. Get going. Severina. Yeah? Severina, remind me to clip you a Mickey Finn. Dane, Dane. And you're happy, sir. Well, do you know uh, when you plan to return home, sir? I'll be back around four, Martin. Who made my very sexy girl? Uh, um, oh, uh, yes. I uh, happened to be looking out of the window when she returned from marketing. She seemed to have plenty of assistants. I don't know what you mean, sir. Well, there were five of them. Tomovich's butler, Popoff, and Mrs. McIntyre's chauffeur, and three other gentlemen, then. All helping with the bundles. Yes, Martin, a very attractive girl. Won't happen again, sir. Martin? Yes. There's something on your mind. Now what's the matter? Nothing, sir. Nothing at all. Horses? Is that it? No, sir. Yes, no, yeah, yes, sir. Horses. You know, everybody seems a little strange since I got back. You don't know the half of them. Oh, yes, yes, sir, yes. Very strange indeed, sir. Well, pull yourself together, Martin. I'll try, sir. You and your racing form. You can't expect a little sister to come in every day. That's what you think, sir. Mr. DeMille presents Deanna Durbin, Pat O'Brien, and Robert Page in Act Two of His Butler's Sister in a moment. Remember those puzzles where you had to tell what's wrong with the picture? Well, I'm going to give Sally a verbal picture and see if she can spot all the mistakes. It's Saturday morning, and Betty Lou is getting ready to wash the week's undies. Oh, well, Mr. Kennedy, that's wrong to begin with. She should never let them pile up like that. And these should be lushed right after every wearing to remove the dirt and perspiration before they can weaken the fibers. Right, Sally. Well, to continue. So Betty Lou filled up her wash bowl with good hot water and dumped in a lot of soap powder. Mistakes two and three. She should never have used hot water for silk or rayon to the fact to save the colors. Oh, and you didn't say much flakes, Mr. Kennedy. If she's using a strong wash day soap, it's apt to weaken the fabric. She could use lukewarm water and mild lux starch. Then she rinsed her undies in hot water. Wrong again. And hung them in front of the radiator to dry. Uh-oh, there's that heat coming in again. If she wanted them to dry quickly and safely, she should have rolled them in a Turkish towel to remove the excess moisture and then hung them away from heat to dry. And finally, she ironed them with a hot iron. That's the last straw, Mr. Kennedy, absolutely. Silk and rayon fabrics need a very low temperature iron. Too hot an iron may scorch them. They even melt some rayons and make a hole. <laughs> Honestly, it's a wonder the poor girl had any undies left after doing all those wrong things. They were probably faded and drab looking and worn out long before their time. Actual tests prove Lux slips in my town stayed lovely three times longer than those washed the wrong way. So if your dealer was out of Lux flakes last time you asked for a box, try again tomorrow. We're shipping more every day. Remember, undies lead a long life when they lead a luck flight. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of his butler's sister, starring Deanna Durbin as Anne, Pat O'Brien as Martin, and Robert Page as Charles Gerard, with Elsa Jansen as Severina. 
Ann Carter has been in New York only one day, and already she's preparing for her first party. There's only one hitch. Her party dress is a maid's uniform, and her arm, instead of resting gently on an escort, is wrapped tightly around the tray of hors d'oeuvres. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You just carry the tray, you don't strangle it. Listen to him. You do fine, and just don't be nervous. All right, get going. He only told me there was going to be a party tonight. Well, it's certainly too bad, Mr. Gerard, that we can sell us first. Quiet, tough guy. Sometimes it happens like this, Anne. All of a sudden, it's very guests for dinner. Now take the orders in. Wait a minute. Yes, ma'am. Well, look, when you get in there, remember, you're not a guest. No smiling. Give me the whole setup in one word. Dead pan. You get it? Dead pan. All right, Peter. Orders, madam. Well, I hope they taste better than you look. What's the matter with your face? Dead pan. I beg your pardon. You look positively weird. Do you have a toothache? No, ma'am. Well, you should take something for that face. Orders, sir. Certainly, I ain't had no dinner. Hmm, good. So you're new here, ain't you? Yes, sir. Well, give me another one of them things. Yes, sir. Shouldn't eat them, really. They're poison. Sister, you interest me. What's your name? Answer. Mine's Calb, Mort Calb, the producer. How do you do, sir? Well, smile, baby. I won't bite you. Dead pan. Dead pan. Yes, sir. You interest me. Especially that kisser. Something wrong with that kisser. I don't know what it is. Please, Mr. Cowbite. Outside your face, sir, you got everything. Except maybe purse. Purse, sir? Purse, purse. You know, being sure of yourself. Like, like, like Martin. Purse. Oh, what? That's what I said. Purse. Anything the matter here? Yeah, her face. Look at it. Damn. <laughs> Come on, relax. Yes, sir. Sure, what she looks like, Morgan. Well, we'll have finished with herring. Oh, no, to spoil the resemblance. Well, okay. Just a look. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you see? Hey, not bad. Not bad at all. You ought to be on the stage, sister. What do you think, Tom? Do you think that sometimes you listen to me? Just remember, you're not a guest. Listen to your watch, baby. Uh, 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 the vacuum in the living room? Huh? Excuse me. Or dirt, sir? Or dirt, madam? The dame's nuts. Well, Charles. Hello, darling. So this is our quiet evening alone. I'm sorry, Liz. I had to drop in on Carl this afternoon on business, so he picked up a phone and invited everybody for dinner. Well, at least we could go out on the terrace for a few minutes. I'd like to see anyone stop us. Come on. Too bad I'm so fond of you, darling. I dislike everything else about you so clearly. Your friends, your profession, your hobby. Do you mind? No, I'm flattered. I must have terrific charm. Aren't you wasting it, dear? Oh, but those people in there are my friends, Liz. The people I work with. Darling. Yes? I'm going to meet in the morning. So soon? Mother's orders. Ronnie Clifford's there. Oh. Why don't you come with me, Charles? You're overworked. You need a rest. You told me yourself you're not getting on with a new shoe. Yes, but I can't just throw it overboard like that. Why can't you? You've made all the money you need. Oh, you'll love me, darling. Sounds very tempting. Why don't you come? Yeah. Why don't I? Hey, look. Oh, yes. now, Helen, do you have to? This is probably the first and last time tonight I'll have Charles to myself and you, Barge. Yes. Well, at least I found you two, but where in heaven's name is everybody else? Yes, where? Well, I'm sure I don't know. Maybe I'd better phone the police. Two minutes ago, they were all in your living room, and now they've simply disappeared. I'll admit they're not much, but at least they're men. Martin? Martin? Yes, sir? Martin, where have all the guests gone? I believe they're in the kitchen, sir. In the kitchen? It appears, sir, they're all insisting on helping the new maid serve dinner, sir. Well, Martin, don't you uh, think you can do something about that? A pleasure, sir, and immediately. I beg your pardon, sir. Why, come in, Anne. Rather a wearing party, wasn't it? Yes, sir. I thought you did extremely well. It's quite obvious my guests thought so, too. Gentlemen, at least. They 
spent most of the evening in the kitchen with you. Well, I want to apologize for not being a better maid, sir. Perhaps mm -hmm. next time. Well, good night, Mr. Gerard. Good night, Anne. Oh, Mr. Gerard. Yes? That song you're playing, I think it's the most beautiful you ever wrote. You think so? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I've always liked it myself. Well, good night. Good night, Anne. Breakfast. Take it away, Mark. Severina says you need fish, sir. Brain food. Oh. Apparently you agree or you wouldn't have served it. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm a bit disturbed this morning. Again? Yes, sir. With your permission, I should like to give the new maid her two weeks' notice today. Huh? Oh, I rather liked her. Nice taste in music. You kidding? What? Uh, sorry, sir. Sorry. Just thinking out loud, sir. Well, perhaps you had better let her go. I won't have any further need for her. I'm going to bed tonight, Martin. You'll get my train reservations, please. Will you be gone long, sir? I don't know. And uh, give Anne four weeks' notice instead of two and reference it. Make them good and tell her... Oh, tell her I'm sorry. I shall be very happy to, sir. I'll be going downtown in a few minutes. If anything important comes up, you can reach me this afternoon, Mr. Cobb's office. <laughs> Honey, I called you down here because I've been a producer for 25 years and ain't never gone wrong yet. Neither with a play nor a personality. So I know what I'm talking about. But if you'd only let me sing, then you can really play. Just one little song. It won't take but a minute. Uh, 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 we got all afternoon. Now, look. Just having a beautiful singing voice don't mean nothing. It's the pose and personality that counts. See what I mean, baby? I, I think so, Mr. Cal. I really can't say, and if you don't mind, I'd much rather sing for you now. Take it easy, take it easy. But Mr. Gerard is coming here, and I don't think I should be here when he does. Gerard? He... he fired you, didn't he? He'd be glad to see me give you a break. I know, Mr. Yes, Calvin. sir, the minute I seen you last night, he says, Mort, there's a little lady that ain't going to be wrestling with a broom much longer. Well, if it's a choice between wrestling with you or the broom, I'll take the broom. That's it, honey. That's a quick answer right on a beam. Personality. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Where you going? What is this here, a foot race? Don't you want to stay and sing for me? I really think I'd better be going. Right now. Hello, Mort. Oh, hello, Anne. Hello, Mr. Gerard. Excuse me, please. I'm just leaving. Oh, don't go on my account. I'll only be a minute. Sit down. Yes, sir. I hated to intrude, Mort, but well, I had to see you. Sure, Charlie. I'm afraid you'll have to call off the show, Mort. I'll never finish it. Call off the show? I'm sorry. Either I'm tired or I'm washed up. Anyway, I'm leaving for Maine. Have you gone crazy? Maybe, but that's how it stands. How do you like that? You can't be so tired you can't rewrite your old tunes. Nobody can be so tired they can't do that. Well, that's how tired I am, I guess. But the show's booked to open the first week in September. It's off as far as I'm concerned, more than that's that. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to lose my temper, but nobody ever turned more cow down like this before. Oh, no, please. You can't do this. It's wrong, Mr. Gerard. I know you'll be unhappy. I signed Maggie Howard and Dot Stanley, and I'm already making a deal you with... you your whole life. You write such beautiful music. You won't be yourself without your work. What? If you go away now, you'll be giving up everything. You'll be unhappy and disappointed, and then it's going to be too late, because once you're gone, you won't be able to get back again. Well, I didn't ask for your opinion. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm not your maid anymore. I was just speaking to you as a friend. I had to say what I did because, well, because I admire your work so much. Goodbye. Well, can you beat that? And I was going to teach her first. Oh. Martin tells me you're going out, Anne. You look charming. Thank you. I'm uh, sorry you... That is, I'm sorry. I... What I mean to say is I think we may have misunderstood each other in Cobb's office today. I, I want you to feel that I don't appreciate your... And I'm sorry I said what I did. It wasn't any of my business. Oh, yes, it was. And I, I wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. And goodbye. Goodbye. And goodbye. Thank you. Good luck. Oh. 
<laughs> uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, for my birthday, I buy the biggest birthday cake in the Pateka. And for my girl, Anna, here, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, your yeah, girl, da, da. For my girl, Anna, the biggest piece of cake. Oh, pop up your sweet. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you. Anna, Anna, I wish to make a proposal. Why, pop Yes, pop up, Sergei Ivanovich is a man of action. He thinks, he speaks. Anna, do me the honor, the great honor. Yes? The great honor of joining the menage of Patronovich, my employer in the capacity of first mate. <laughs> I'll make you a promise, Papa. If the people here tonight don't like my singing, I'll accept the proposal. Yes, Singham, what are you talking about? Uh, well, Martin, I... Uh, wait, Anna. Pop of explain. You gentlemen all have brought me wonderful and expensive presents for my birthday. But the best present is from Anna. <laughs> Anna is going to sing for me. Man, are you nuts? Sticking your neck out like this, the joint is packed. She does not stick out the neck. Now close the big mouth, Martin. Already it is arranged with the orchestra to play her song. How do you know she can sing? Anna tells me so. On that first and unforgettable day when I meet her and carry for her home the groceries from the weekly piggy. If Anna tells Papa she can sing, she can sing. No. Leon! Leon! Yes, Papa! We are ready. Quiet the noise and make with the music. I'll try not to disgrace you, Martin. Well, Anna, by the orchestra. Go, go. <laughs> The moment when the moon was dim and low, we were near it for a moment, and we found a glow. We thought the light of a dream never Mr. Gerard. Good evening, Leon. How oh, are the pity you come just now, Mr. Gerard? One minute sooner, and you would have heard the most beautiful voice in the world singing for Papa's birthday. You see that lovely young lady over there? Anne? Yes, I think this is what they call her, Anne. Uh, excuse me, Leon. I think I'll go over and congratulate Papa. What a voice, Anne. What a voice. Like a bird, she sings. Like a bird. Oh, sis, why didn't you tell me you could sing like that? I tried to tell you. Oh, I never figured you were so wonderful. I'm so glad you like me, Martin. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, tomorrow Anna belongs to the world. Tonight, if it's my birthday, she belongs to me. <laughs> Martin, Martin, gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Good evening sir. Happy good birthday, day. Papa. If you'll allow me, please order some champagne. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And? Yes? Will you dance this with me? It's my song, you know. Did you miss your train, sir? Sure looks like it. Please, Anne. Oh, I'd like to. Very much. Anna goes out. Champagne comes in. Ah, that's life. Been here long? I just came in. Oh, well, then you didn't... No. I didn't go to Maine. Oh. I'm sorry you missed your train. And I've been thinking about what you said. I, well, I had no right to walk out on Cobb and all those people depending on the show, and so... Well, I've decided to stay. Oh, you're wonderful. I mean, doing a thing like that. You know, it's not so hard as I thought to admit you're wrong. Isn't it? No. I came straight to you because, well, if the show is a hit, it'll be thanks to you. If your new music is like this, it has to be a hit. I could dance to this all night. I'm sorry you said that. Why? Because I had hopes we'd go for a walk. Right now? Right now. Oh. Well, why not? Wonderful. Tired? Uh-uh. Are you? 
dead. <laughs> I haven't walked so much in 15 years. Did you like walking then? Not particularly. There were times when I didn't have car fare. It's hard to imagine that you were ever... Broke? Mm-hmm. I certainly was. Selling the songs was hard. Finding them was fun. The most fun I ever had in my life. Until now. Where did you find your songs? Oh, everywhere. Around the corners of the the street, in the faces of people. I'd hear them with the ships coming up the harbor. And they were all over the place. I wrote them down a dozen. And they were all the same song. Same. Just one song. One theme. I love it. How about you? About me? Did you walk miles and miles, too, in Centerville, Indiana? <laughs> there aren't miles and miles in Centerville. Were you looking for something? Yes. What? A song. Just one? Just one. The same thing? Did you find it? Yes. And? Yes, Charles. Oh, nothing. Just Anne. Look. There's no moon. But there's moonlight at your feet. See it? I hear it. What does it sound like? Yes, sir. Hey, we're home. Right house with the wrong door. It says service entrance. Right house, right entrance. But how about trying my end of the house? Why did you try mine for a change? Well, I was just waiting for an invitation. Now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille brings us Act Three of his Butler Sister. Starring Deanna Durbin, Pat O'Brien, and Robert Page. But now, I'd like you to meet Tom Nelson. His wife, Nan, is out rolling bandages. So he's decided to be helpful and wash the dishes she left in the kitchen. Now, let's see. Dish pan. Soap. Ah, uh, just this cake will do. Now. Well, come on there, lather up. I'm sure Nan gets better suds than this. Uh, maybe the water isn't hot enough. Oh, gosh, how does she stand this three times a day? She sure is a wonderful woman. Hello, dear. Why, how nice of you. <laughs> but you're making such a struggle of it. Well, this soap's no help. Look, no suds at all. Doggone it, honey, it looks so easy when you do it. Oh, oh I see, silly. Of course it's easy. I use Lux. Now, you just take that old cake of soap out of there and whip up some rich suds with these Lux flakes. Oh, oh, there, that's enough. Just a little Lux goes a long way. And that's what I call good suds, too. Mm-hmm. And look how nice it keeps my hands. It's a good thing I caught you in time to make you change to Lux, dear. I couldn't have you getting dishpan hands. Thanks, folks. You've said just about everything I could about Lux flakes for dishes, except how far just a little Lux goes. Lux does up to twice as many dishes as the same weight of other dishwashing soaps tested. Use all you need to make good suds, but no more than you need, for soap contains important war material. Yes, Lux is thrifty and so kind to your hands. Get a box tomorrow and see how easy it is to change dishpan hands to Lux hands. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. We'll meet our stars very informally after the play. But now here's the curtain going up on the third act of his butler's sister, starring Deanna Durbin, <laughs> Pat O'Brien, and Robert Page with Elsa Jensen. Only a few moments have passed since Ann Carter and Charles Gerard 
made the profound discovery that they are in love. Thereupon Charles, being a man, has simply yawned, gone to bed, and fallen asleep. But Anne, being a woman, is still awake, a little dewy-eyed, a little dazed, a little impervious to the knocking on her door that finally rouses her from love's sweet coma. Yes? Martin, can I come in? Dear Martin. Of course, Martin, come in. Hello, Martin. I've been looking all over town for you. Sweet, thoughtful, Martin. Great thought for my ear. Where you been? We were just walking. You and Gerard. If you think I'm going to stand by and let that... Martin. Certainly nice of you to walk out and pop off like that. I don't see what was so terribly wrong. Oh, you don't see anything. That's why I'm going to do the seeing for you. I can look out for myself. Sure, so can Gerard. Well, it's all fun for him. Let him have his fun, not with you. You don't know anything about it, and it's none of your business. Well, I'll make it my business. You're getting out in the morning. No, I'm not. You don't understand, Martin. I love him. He loves me. Oh, he does, huh? Yes. What are you going to do? Make a mess out of your life? Well, I'm not going to let you. And what can you do about it? Plenty, sister. Plenty. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, sir. Martin, I never felt better in my life. Why, this breakfast looks good. Everything looks good, even you. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, Martin, here. See, I didn't forget. My check for the tickets to the Butler's Ball. Tonight, isn't it? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Would you like the tickets? Oh, no, Martin. Just give them to someone. Severina, Popoff, anyone. Yes, sir. Uh, what a sigh, Martin. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, sir. Nothing at all. <laughs> Where are you going? To get your eggs, sir. They'll wait. What's the joke, huh? <laughs> oh, looks like the joke's on you, sir. <laughs> What do you mean? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I can't tell you, sir. Why not? Well, the more I think of it... <laughs> well, come on, let's have it. You can't keep a joke like that to yourself, especially if it's on me. Oh, well, if you insist. <laughs> Looks like you've been taken for a ride, sir. At last, that girl. What girl? What girl? Oh, yes. One does get the mix, doesn't one? The new maid. Looks like she's put one over on you. <laughs> and that's the thing we've been trying to avoid, sir. You've been drinking, Martin. I beg your pardon, sir. Then come on. What's all this about, anyway? Well, I'll tell you. Looks like she's wormed her way into your affection. She's just like all the rest of them. They struck ambitious. I'll get the eggs, sir. Wait a minute. Are you referring to... Anne, the new maid. She's the type of girl that gets in your hair, haunts managers' offices. Yes? Of course, I understand how you feel. Young, pretty. She does look innocent, doesn't she? I don't believe a word you're... Martin, how do you know this? Oh, everybody knows. That is, the servants. Of course, I understand if you want to have a little fun, but still... But still what? Well, it doesn't seem to me there's much fun if you know a girl is trying to use you. Well. Don't take it too hard, boss. After all, you can't go to the payoff window after every race. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> oh, nothing. It's just so funny, that dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought the little girl had wormed away into my affections, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the poor kid. I wouldn't want to hurt her feelings. Huh? Oh, I thought she understood. I just missed my train, dropped into the pelican, trying to kill a dull evening, and oh, I have that girl. Well, it, it's just too bad, that's all. You understand, don't you, Martin? Oh, yes, sir. Hello, operator. Uh, long distance, please. Martin, I uh, think you'd better ask Ann to come in a minute. Yes, sir. Long distance? I want to get Bar Harbor, Maine. Miss Elizabeth Campbell. Person to person. This is Charles Gerard, Murray Hill 9090. Thanks. Ah, good morning, Ann. Good morning. Thank you, Martin. Very good, sir. Well, Miss Carter, what'll it be? What? Oh, you played your cards very well. What are you going to sing for? What do you mean? Why, well, surely you're not going to waste all your efforts. This is your opportunity. Oh, Martin, that will be all. Yes, sir. I don't want to thank. Oh, well, in that case, I, I want to thank you for a charming evening. I know it was rude of me to take you away from your friends, but well, I do hope they're not too angry. Martin, you may go. I prefer to stay. Look, this doesn't concern you. Maybe it does. Martin, you're fired. Oh, yeah? Well, that's fine. That's great. Martin, wait. 
Mr. Gerard, please. Sorry, baby. Maybe you're right. We don't belong here. The phone's ringing, Martin. So it is, sir. But I'm fired. So you are. Hello? Oh, Liz, darling. I... Yes, I know, but listen, I missed my train. I'm sorry, but I won't miss the next one. I'll see you in the morning. Yes. Yeah. I'm afraid I did something very silly last night. I'll tell you about it when I see it. It'll give you a big laugh. Yes. Yeah. Okay, darling. Bye. I think that will be all, then. Martin? Yes, sir? I'm sure you must have a lot of things to clean up for the ball tonight. You and Ann can leave whenever you wish. <laughs> idea if I can get grip. I told you I was going home. Oh, look, sis, forget about going home. So we've been fired. Okay, we can get other jobs. And besides, you're not going to throw a great career overboard just like that. <laughs> Some career. Oh, look, with your pipes and my brains, we can really go places. I'll be your manager, you know, like you said, and I'll only take 5%. There's only one catch, Mark. Yeah? I'm all through for me. I don't want to have anything to do with music or the stage ever. Well, I take you nuts. Besides, what can you do in Centerville? <laughs> Got everything I need. Good food, good quarters, good clothes, not too much work, no worry. Remember? Yeah, I remember. I remember you offered me a job as manager, and I accepted it. Now you're running out of me. But I'm not going to sing anymore, so I don't need a manager. Oh, come on, honey. Take it over for just another day. Tonight, with why we'll have some fun. The butler's ball. Besides, I promised Pop off and the boys you'd be there, and they're counting on you. After all, they ran out on last night. Martin, I can't. Well, if you don't care about me, I might have a little consideration for them. I don't care. Okay, if you want to go around ruining other people's lives. I'm not ruining anybody's lives. No, what about mine? Oh, look, sis, you're all I got. Please don't leave me. Oh, come on. What about waiting in the morning? Go to the bar with me tonight. All right, all right. Just leave me alone. Oh, thanks, kid. Thanks. I beg your pardon, sir. Do you have a ticket? Why, no. I'm uh, I'm looking for someone. I'm sorry, sir, but this is a private party. Butler's own Oh, I see. Well, I, uh, I'm i looking for Mr. Martin Murphy. Oh, Martin. He was around a moment ago. Oh, there he is. And Martin. Yeah. This gentleman to see you. Hello, Martin. Where's Anne? Henry, I thought you said there was a gentleman to see me. Why, he told me that... Uh... I never saw him before. Now, wait a minute, Martin. All I want to know is his hand here. I've got to talk to him. Certainly is overcrowded in Maine this season. Oh, forget about that, will you? Martin. Hey, Martin. Hello, Martin. Certainly appreciate your coming tonight. Mort, I'll give you a word. You can put it in the bank and draw on it. Hello, Mort. You're just in time. Uh, this is the gentleman who invited me. Who's your friend, Martin? You got me, pal. He claims he knows everybody. Oh, Mort, don't do this to me. I'm your pal. Now, listen, please, both of you. I've got to get in here. What do you want from me, a reference? He might turn out to be a vicious character. You better get away from him. Henry. Yes, Mr. Collins? Throw the bum out. That'll learn him. Now, Martin, about the kid. If she can choke as well as you say, why, it's all right. With now, me, look I'll... here, Henry. I'd be delighted to purchase a uh, ticket. This but... is a private affair. I told you before, sir. Now, if you would only be good enough to... Uh, Severina! Oh, Severina, I've been looking everywhere for you. They won't let me in. Don't let them do this to uh, your cousin Charlie. What? Uh, uh, oh, Charlie. Charlie, darling, I'm so glad you could come. Explain to this gentleman who I am, please. Uh, Henry, this is my uh, cousin Charlie. Shake hands, gentlemen. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, of course, any relative of Severina's is most welcome. Well, thank you. Come on, Charlie, have fun. Have fun. Now, you aren't my cousin anymore, and I'm glad of it. Why? Well, you know why. You have ruined the lives of a whole family. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Anne and Martin, and you know it. Poor orphans. Now all they got is each other. Well, what have I ever done to them? Did you ever hear of a brother and sister that were satisfied with each other? And without a job? Without a... What? You... You mean to tell me that she's his sister? Yes, I mean. You mean their brother and sister? Yes. Oh, Severina, listen, from now on, any time you want me to eat fish, I'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a special privilege. We will hear seeing a very beautiful young lady. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a great pleasure to introduce Miss Anne Carter. In front of all these people? Don't worry. Just wait and listen.
Let's put your signature on this contract, honey. Morton, I need it. And keep the pen, darling. I'm going to need your signature, too, on our marriage license. Charles! Oh, Charles! But your train, I thought you were going away tonight. I am, darling, but not to Maine. Maryland. Maryland? People can get married in Maryland right away. Except they insist on one thing. What, darling? A bride. Oh, fussy people. Yes, sir. If you want to keep a maid these days, you got to marry him. In just a moment, our stars will return for a curtain call. Do you remember way back when you used to wear silk and nylon stockings? Did you ever wonder what happened to all those you gave to salvage? Well, if stockings could talk, they might say something like this. My dear, you mix with so many kinds of people here. Isn't it amazing? All of us stockings go into the same solution and then turn out completely different colors depending on whether we're silk or nylon. I suppose that nice little silk stocking that came in with us is a gunpowder bag by now. What we're going into is a military secret. And I was practically new such a short time ago. But I was rubbed, my dear, rubbed with a cake of soap. Imagine. In no time, of course, I popped a run. Why, I wore for months and months. Of course, I got a nightly bath in Lux Flakes. And my, how that refreshed me. Saved my elasticity. Making all stockings last just as long as possible is part of every woman's wartime job. The lovely new rayons you're wearing now, just like silk and nylon, will last longer if you lux them after every wearing. Here's a hint about drying time. Always allow rayons to dry 24 to 48 hours before you wear them. Nightly luxing helps you to double the wear you get from every pair. Actual tests proved it. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. It's curtain call time for the butler's sister, the butler, and the butler's boss. But this time, they're traveling under the names of the Anna Devin, Pat O'Brien, and Robert Page. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. It's grand to be back with you. I imagine that uh, you and Pat had quite a lot of fun filming his butler's sister. Well, I sprained my ankle. Oh, well, that was nothing, Pat. I had to learn Russian for some of the songs. Hey, Russian's a pretty tough language, isn't it? Well, it took me took me a full day to learn to say Drastovichia. <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? Why, Pat. Pat, you speak Russian. What I said was, how do you do? Si, si. <laughs> <laughs> That's Spanish, Pat. Well, what do you know? I speak Spanish, too. Spanish, sprained ankle, learning Russian. What else happened to Anna? Well, I joined the crew of a Catalina bomber out in the South Pacific. I guess you'll have to explain that one, Deanna. I'm the honorary hostess. Did they make you a member of the short snorters? I guess you really have to fly part of the ocean for that, Pat. Well, the short snorters are a rather exclusive club, I believe. The president and Mr. Churchill are among the members. Well, I guess it isn't really exclusive. They let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, what's the gag about carrying a dollar bill? Well, that's your membership card. When you become a member during the course of some ocean flight... The other short snorters who happen to be present autograph a dollar for you. And if you happen to get caught without the dollar in your pocket, you have to pay the guy who catches you a buck. <laughs> have, uh, have you got yours with you, Pat? Right here, C.B. I ran out of autograph space over the jungles of Dutch Vienna, so I got a few dollar bills pasted here together. I bought them with me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a nice That's a nice one, that Pat. <laughs> have you chosen next week's play yet, Mr. DeMille? Yes, we have, Deanna. And it's a real mystery thriller. The RKO picture, The Fallen Sparrow. And our stars will be Robert Young, Maureen O'Hara, and Walter Slezak. Romance, intrigue, and murder are the elements of next week's play. And you're all invited to join Robert Young on the trail of adventure that, that leads to a Nazi spy ring and the beautiful girl who won't talk. Mm, I'm shivering already, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night, Dickie boy. Good night. 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 This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood.
Deanna Durbin and Robert Page will star together in their next Universal Technicolor picture to be filmed for the Jerome Kern musical score. Heard in tonight's play were Jay Novello as Popoff, Arthur Q. Bryan as Cowb, and Florence Lake, Joe Gilbert, Truda Marson, Buck Woods, Leo Cleary, Charles Seal, Helga Moray, and Norman Field. This program is heard by our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Robert Young, Maureen O'Hara, and Walter Slazak in The Fallen Sparrow. Listen, lady, spies the bar. Your ration points go farther, go further, go further. Your ration points go farther, go further when your cooking is fried. And spry shortening gives lighter cake, flaky pastry, crispy, digestible fried food. So if you want to be a better cook, tell your grocer, I want fried. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.